Hi guys. So today I am reviewing um, the Mazda CX-30 again. So previously in this channel, um, I've reviewed the CX-30 base model. That's with two liter engine uh, and front wheel drive. I've also reviewed the 1.8 liter diesel model. So uh, today, I'm back in a 2 liter petrol model, but this time with all wheel drive. Yep. So uh, this is price wise the most expensive uh, iteration of the CX30 available in our market uh, at 176,000 ringgit. If you compare uh, this, the 1.8 diesel, which is front wheel drive is 172,000 ringgit the the 2 liter petrol front wheel drive high spec which has exactly the same equipment as this one just without all wheel drive is 164,000 ringgit so to sum up uh, you will need to pay an additional 12,000 ringgit to run that prop shaft through the center tunnel now guys, um, although nowadays most crossovers at this size are typically front wheel drive, uh, having all wheel drive is actually not that big a deal. But there is a bit of a packaging challenge in the case of the CX-30 because it has a torsion beam rear suspension. So let me just show you under the car. Now, as you can see from under here, this is the rear differential. This is the uh, CV joint or the drive shaft. All right, and that is the prop shaft coming from under there. So the rear differential is fixed in position. Okay, and you can see here, this is the torsion beam. Okay, so this is the trailing arm of the torsion beam. And the torsion beam itself is, is, uh, is situated further ahead. So in this sub suspension setup the torsion beam itself the beam itself is designed to be able to deform and twist thereby allowing a certain degree of independence all right in its movements but um the thing is that right because the the entire beam is unsprung so it moves together with the wheel and they have to take deliberate care to ensure that the movements of the beam do not impact the drive line and so that's why you can see the torsion beam curves upwards in the middle all right to give clearance for the drive shaft and comes down again the other side so um it is this is this this same setup is also available in overseas market with the Mazda 3. Uh, amazed that Mazda took the effort, amazing effort to develop this uh, suspension setup. Okay, they they took the effort to go to a torsion beam suspension with this generation platform, and yet at the same time they also took the trouble to integrate an all-wheel drive system into this setup. Okay guys, so as mentioned earlier, despite the 12,000 ringgit price differentiation between this and the front wheel drive model, um, they are exactly the same in terms of equipment. So really, it is only the all wheel drive system that differentiates this from the 2.0G high model, all right, that costs 12,000 less. Okay, everything else is the same, uh, cosmetically, as well as uh, in terms of features. So you do get this iActive all-wheel drive sticker here, okay, and uh, you also get this little, this subtle little all-wheel drive badge here below the CX-30 wording, but everything else, the same, okay. Um, so styling-wise, overall styling-wise, the CX-30 is... Um, it's a handsome looking car it is remember based on the master 3 platform so um because this is uh, an, an suv all right so what mazda has done is compared this with the cx uh, with the mazda 3 the mazda 3 takes on a bolder 
a more uh, a more daring styling particularly if you look at the hatchback version right that one has a very um, a very dynamic very uh, unconventional styling whereas this one the CX30 here uh, especially if you look at it from the side profile it has a more conventional looking silhouette okay uh, of course the Q the one Q that that ties this all right that that uh, that's that tells you that this is related to the new Mazda 3 would be the shape of the bonnet all right uh, which is uh, which 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 run which does not intersect with uh, the lights if you remember the previous gen sky active mazdas the bonnet will always run okay into the headlight and then and then uh and then it you know this part of it runs uh you know it's connected to the headlights all right whereas here there is that separation at all right and uh, this being the top spec model you get mass you get full mazda i active sense okay uh, autonomous emergency braking you get um you get active cruise control as well and as you can see the side mirrors are folded okay so uh you get not only keyless entry okay so as i open close the door and as you can see as i hold this key here and i walk away the car locks itself so this has been a mazda feature for some time still not very common but i think that this is uh very much appreciated by by people uh you, you might i myself included who always can't remember whether you lock the car or not with this the car takes the decision of you at the moment you walk away from the car itself locks so as you can see from this angle right Okay, now there aren't uh, like like we see in the Mazda three. Uh, there are no uh, uh, Mazda does does not use a lot of lines, a lot of sharp lines like most cars. Instead, what they do is with uh, they have they have you know uh, they use curvature and reflection of light to to bring out the design of the car. So as you can see here, there's this very gentle line that runs up from from the wheel arch here that goes all the way up there okay you see how it bends the light okay to 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 focus your 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 view of the car so even though there's no real physical line there but you can see you know how 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 it bends the light it creates the impression that it is a line there okay very very um high level of craftsmanship to create this kind of of bodywork okay so uh let's just show you the insides we've got power tailgate we've got a reverse camera here okay so uh, i've shown you this before a decently sized boot but of course uh not quite the size of the uh cx5 all right and uh, the keyless entry is only for the front doors so you have to unlock the front from the front doors before you get into the back okay so here in this spec you have uh rear aircon vents uh middle armrest okay here's the uh here's the front section of the cabin basically it's uh it's the same as the as the 1.8 diesel model that i showed you in my previous video all right uh so to show you again here's the instrument cluster as well as the center screen now um uh one thing i have to to mention is that there is no display anywhere uh between here the center screen here or the instrument cluster that shows you an all-view drive status display you know in some cars with all-view drive there's a monitor that uh, that shows you the, the distribution of torque between the front and rear axle Okay, either on the instrument cluster or the center screen just to show you the all-wheel drive system at work um, pers And personally having if I were to opt for this and pay 12k extra I would like that little touch there to remind me of why I paid 12 extra thousand ringgits for this car
Okay, so the Mazda CX-30, right? Uh, now, because of its CBU status, uh, it already en uh, faces a pricing disadvantage. I mean, we are the only market in the world, I believe, whereby the CX-30 is more expensive than the CX-5, which is a price positioning that doesn't make sense. But that's how it goes because the CX-5 is assembled locally, gets EEV incentives. The CX-30 is fully imported. So, um, but I mean, if you, the thing is, so it becomes a slightly more difficult model to justify. See, my brother in Singapore recently bought one of these. He bought the two liter, um, the two liter front wheel drive model. And um, the thing is for him, he he is just starting his family he, he, uh, and and you know he, he does not need a car the size of the cx5 so the, so the cx30 is a good you know not only a, a, a downsized alternative to the cx5 but also a genuinely more affordable car so he does not have to spend as much whereas here in malaysia because of the relative price positioning the cx30 has to be presented as a sportier take on the CX-5, a more lifestyle-oriented product, a more style-driven kind of product. Where it, so, the, whereas the CX-5 continues to be the bread and butter seller, this becomes a niche product. Yeah, so, but, but that's that. And even if you, and it, so now if you look within the CX-30, uh, uh, range and I've mentioned this before if you compare this against the CX-5 then it's difficult to justify but if you compare this to the Mazda 3 all right then you, you think of it uh, the step up from the Mazda 3 from an equivalent spec Mazda 3 to the CX-30 is just a few thousand ringgit and from that you actually move yourself to a one in a way a one segment up product and in that sense the cx30 does have that value proposition it's just that you need to shift your perspectives around a bit uh, but having driven now three variants of the cx30 in general i can't help but come to the conclusion that if you were to look at the CX, if you just if you are really keen on the CX thirty and you're just choosing which one to go for, it is difficult to to look beyond the two liter front wheel drive high spec variant um, as the pick of the range. You see, because whether it's front wheel drive or all wheel drive, the CX thirty drives quite well. It drives like the Mazda three, which means it has good handling. Uh, ride is a bit on the firm side but not unbearable it has a fantastic engine and transmission combo um, right that that uh, that you know smooth to rev very refined and 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 a fantastically intelligent six-speed automatic transmission so to drive uh, the CX-30 really is uh, there is no complaint okay um, yes this all-wheel drive model in isolation, okay, that's why I've driven it, I can find no obvious vices. It's just that, you know, in day-to-day -day driving conditions, in city driving conditions, I fail to, to encounter any scenario except maybe seriously wet weather conditions where, where the front-wheel drive model would, fitted with good tyres wouldn't be able to do what this one can right now there's also the alternative of the diesel variant and i always argue that and the, with the diesel pairing the diesel engine with all-wheel drive perhaps would make more sense especially that, that that's my conclusion with the cx5 but having driven the diesel version i've personally found the diesel engine to be strangely by master standards distinctly unsatisfying to drive right and 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 here's the thing i am i have always been very open to 
diesel power. I've always been very fond of diesel engines. Uh, I, I rate the Mazda 2.2 diesel very highly. I also rate the 1.5 diesel that did not make it to our market, but I had the opportunity to try in time. I rate that very highly too. But with this one, somehow, uh, with the 1.8 diesel, somehow I was not as satisfied uh, with the way the engine performs, with the way the engine behaves, with the way the engine responds. With the CX30, the overriding conclusion that I that I can get that I, that I have is that the petrol engine is the far more satisfying powertrain to use. And you know, in the case of the CX30, which began life as a passenger car platform anyways and with a two liter naturally aspirated petrol engine that is not super powerful a good engine but not super powerful you don't really need all of your drive to give you to deliver a verdict now if you were to ask me would i buy one of these um to be frank for this budget i would look at the cx5 turbo instead because uh sheer it's sheer bang for buck for that kind of money uh i get a bigger car i get a far more powerful car all right even though that even even though dynamically uh the cx5 turbo is not as is not as finely balanced as the as the uh 2.0 or 2.5 petrol engines but <laughs> I like it for the sheer ridiculousness of it and the sheer value for performance uh, proposition it's 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 insane okay but and also within the CX30 uh, family if I were to narrow it but if I was to, to narrow the question down further within the CX30 family I still would not go for this all-wheel drive I would pick the 2.0 high-spec front-wheel drive model instead.